Eagles general manager Howie Roseman does it again with another blockbuster trade before the draft. This time with the New Orleans Saints. Takeaways coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. You are Locked on Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. I'm Louis DiBiase. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today and tell them that Locked On sent you. I'm Louis DiBiase, host of the Locked On Eagles podcast, recapping a blockbuster trade today between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints. It's a Tuesday edition of the podcast, episode 205 this week. Download it into your phone wherever you get your shows. For the second year in a row, General Manager Howie Roseman says, I'm moving down in the first round. I'm collecting a future first-round pick. I'm going to keep this draft flexibility, this optionality, especially at the quarterback position, which we'll get into, wide open and continue to play the value game. If anybody does that, to the max of their abilities. It is Howie Roseman. The Eagles today trading the 16th overall pick, the 19th overall pick, and a seventh round pick in 2022 to New Orleans in exchange for the Saints' 18th overall selection, their third round pick, which is 101st overall, their seventh round selection, a 2023 first, and a 2024 second round draft pick. What a deal from Howie Roseman. You know, I give Howie Roseman a lot of crap. He has a lot of weaknesses. I think my criticism of Howie is completely justified, but also at the same time, I feel like I'm pretty good at being balanced with Roseman, what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. One thing I have always praised him for and have never trashed him is his ability to get the maximum amount of value in any trade. Regardless of the trade, it always feels like he comes away with more than he probably should have gotten. Even if he created the situation where he shouldn't have got as much value because of what he did to Carson Wentz, but yet he still gets, you know, ammunition from these teams that is unexpected. Howie Roseman understands value. He understands trades more than anybody. And to get that haul from the New Orleans Saints today, or I should say on Monday night, I'm recording this late on Monday. We're dropping the show early yesterday evening to get that deal. When you already, like, the the fact that this draft, considering it is not dictated by quarterbacks, it is not going to push down a lot of other good talent at other positions. And you have the 16th and 19th overall pick. Like, these aren't premier top five, even top 10 selections. The fact that you were able to, one, find a trade partner. We've said on this show for weeks, we've talked about this exact scenario of the Eagles should want to trade down and collect future assets, especially to try and trade up for a quarterback. In future drafts, if Jalen Hurts isn't the guy. But our issue that we would run into is there are a lot of teams probably with that same mindset that don't love this quarterback class, that don't love the talent in this prospect pool, with a lot of that having to do with quarterbacks not going early, especially in that 15 to 32 range that the Eagles are sitting in. Finding a trade partner, especially one that's going to be willing to give you a first-round pick in a future draft in stronger classes, that's going to be hard to come by. The fact that you found that partner You were not only able to get a first round pick next year, but you collect a second round pick in 2024 and you get an additional third this year, all to basically move down one of your three first round picks this year and kick the can down the road for next year. So now you only have two first round picks, but you've got two next year, two seconds the year after. And this year you still have five picks in the first three rounds. You still have two firsts, a second and two thirds. I mean, this is highway robbery. How we robbery? I mean, I was trying to do a pun there. It didn't really work, but hats off to Roseman. The fact that he created that future draft flexibility and maintained the flexibility this year, God's work. Hats off to Howie. Props. This was an incredible trade, and I'm very surprised. I thought they were going to explore this scenario, but I did not think they'd be able to pull it off. And even if they did, not to this amount of value, but this is what Howie does well. This is his strength. And to me, it really does relieve me about the quarterback situation. 
because although this is this is kind of a somber moment because the Malik Willis to the Eagles pipe dream that I had, while it was a pipe dream, there was a little glimmer of hope for me until Willis was drafted, likely by the Lions. But I was kind of over the 2022 class anyway when I knew that Malik Willis was likely to going to go to Detroit with that second overall pick, and I just did not think the Eagles were going to like these prospects as much as I do. But I'm still feeling really optimistic about the quarterback position, and especially their stance on the position after this trade. Because I was a little nervous, and we did a show on Friday about this. You know, hearing Jeffrey Lurie's comments last week during his press conference you know, you heard him say some things that had you wonder about their mindset and philosophy now about the quarterback position. But this trade, again, actions, we have said this on the show before, with quarterback, because they've said things committing to Jalen Hurts. A lot of what Lurie said last week had you wondering, does he think that quarterback's a, a crapshoot now that you don't invest high picks in because it's so unknown and you try to just have a guy that's some sort of safety uh, safety net that can get hot in the playoffs like Hurts and you know, build the roster around him and hope for the best, you know, and was he spurned by Carson Wentz and it totally changed everything they think about football, you know, that that was some of the, the negative thoughts running through your mind. But again, actions speak louder than words. And this is just another action that shows the Eagles are committed to finding their franchise quarter, quarterback if Hurts is not the guy. This tells me they are preparing if Jalen Hurts does not take that step in 2022 in today's move, it might not seem like it heated up the seat for Jalen Hurts at QB1 because they're not going to take a quarterback in 2022. It heated it up, I think, even more because I think quarterback was at the forefront of this decision. It tells me they're going to try to move up in 2023 or they've got two first-round picks next year. They have two seconds the year later. If another veteran quarterback becomes available on the open market and they'd be willing to sign off on a trade to the Eagles, Again, it gives the Eagles the key word that we throw around so much on this podcast is optionality and flexibility. And I'm feeling better about quarterback because, again, it shows that they've always had a certain belief in Jalen Hurts, but it was always cautious and not all in. They want him to prove them wrong, that he's more than just a solid bridge starter that has exceeded expectations because in 2020 when they picked him in the second round, it was never to be the QB1. It was to be Carson Wentz's long-term backup. He's already exceeded those expectations. They hope he can become even more and become their next version of Russell Wilson that they missed out on the first time and become the franchise quarterback. But they're realistic, and they want him to prove them wrong. But again, this is just another action that lets me know that they're not going to settle for Hurts. They're not going to just say, hey, we want a good guy that could potentially be great for four weeks like Nick Foles was in 2017. We're going to build the roster around him with all these draft picks, and that's the way we're going to go, regardless of if he takes that next step. That's just not what's going to happen. They've shown over two years that's not going to be their mindset. They tried to make things work with Carson Wentz. They looked into trading up for Zach Wilson. They moved down for future picks this year to play that optionality game at quarterback. Then they tried for Russell Wilson, I think Deshaun Watson too. This next move for future picks, they're keeping all of their options open on the table at quarterback, and that is a great feeling. Jalen's going to get this year. He has every opportunity. Again, there's not a lot of second-round picks that get two and a half years, two years and a month and a half, if you will, in 2020, to show that he can be the franchise quarterback, especially when a team didn't take you to be that player. It's a fair opportunity. We'll see if he can take that big leap. Because if not, again, it's going to be tough in 2023 to land some of these prospects with the amount of teams that also have first-round picks, multiple ones on day one. And considering Stroud and Young are probably going one and two overall, going to have to get lucky that a team like the Jaguars and the Jets have those picks. Like There's a lot that has to happen next year to get that player, even if you like a third quarterback. But the good thing is, is the Eagles are well-equipped now to be able to take advantage of that window of opportunity if it does become available and if they need it to become available based on Hurts. So I think this is a great trade overall for value, for what it means at quarterback, and you know what it doesn't stop you from doing in 2022, still building this team with you know five picks in the first three rounds to build around Jalen and just build young, cheap talent on this football team. What I want to do coming up next, I'm going to be joined by Locked On Saints host Ross Jackson. I want to get the other side of this trade, the perspective of kind of what the hell are the Saints thinking? 
Not that this was, you know, a bombshell, horrible, worst trade in NFL history for the Saints. Like, this isn't trading your whole draft for Ricky Williams, if you will. But at the same time, this has got to be with quarterback in mind, right, for the Saints? Like, to give up an extra second and third just to have another first-round pick this year? You know, by giving getting rid of their first next year to have another one this year? What are they thinking? I thought it was about quarterback last time, though, with the Saints in 2018, and they took Marcus Davenport over Lamar Jackson. We're going to hear from Ross Jackson coming up next. Go back and forth with a crossover segment of Locked on Eagles right here on your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, Locked on Eagles. And guys, today's show is sponsored by Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship at Augusta. I cannot wait. You can find the odds podcasts and reviews for all the different leagues this season at betonline.net. The NBA playoff push is right around the corner. Next week, you've got the NHL playoffs as well. MLB season is starting up soon. You've got draft props. Make sure you find all of it at BetOnline. They're your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about the trends in action because BetOnline, it's where the game starts. All right, everybody, welcome back into a crossover segment of Locked On Eagles and Locked On Saints. I'm Louis DiBiase, host of the Locked On Eagles podcast. He's Ross Jackson, host of Locked On Saints, recapping a blockbuster trade today between the Eagles and the Saints. The Eagles move down in the first round. They give the Saints the 16th and 19th overall selection, as well as a seventh round pick for the Saints' 18th overall pick, a 2023 first a 2024 second round pick, as well as a third this year and another later pick. Ross, your overall thoughts. I mean, the Eagles, we're kind of used to this now, two years in a row. General Manager Howie (laughs) Roseman, he is creating flexibility in the draft, and I think especially for the quarterback future. Where is the Saints head at with this move to give up picks for, you know, in the future for more firsts this year in this class? Yeah, look, I I think this trade helps both of these teams out in terms of what their mentality may be going into this. I think it's glaringly obvious that one of these teams values this year's draft more than the other team, or I I guess maybe as much as the other team values next year's draft, Philly being the latter there, which makes a lot of sense because you get another year in terms of the quarterback situation around New Orleans, maybe looking to address the quarterback situation a little bit more rapidly, right? And so even though they have Jameis Winston on a two-year deal, this reeks of there is a quarterback that they like. I don't think that it means that they're going to package 16 and 19 to move up into the top 10, but it certainly gives them an opportunity having 16 and 19 to be able to use one of those picks to move up a little bit in the first round and make sure that they land their guy, which I think might be Kenny Pickett out of Pittsburgh, if mm. I'm being honest, uh, and then also allow them to be able to land a wide receiver with that other selection, which is a spot they absolutely absolutely need an immediate impact player. Yeah, Ross, that's what I was going to ask you. It feels like quarterback has to do with this, although, you know, going to, you know, 16 and 19, that's not a super high jump. So you're mm-hmm. like, is, is that really having to do with quarterback? But the Eagles know in 2016, Howie Roseman jumped from the 12th overall pick to eight and then from eight to two leapfrogging twice to get mm-hmm. Carson Wentz in that draft class. So I was going to ask you if quarterback is, you know, at the forefront, I say that, though, but at the same time in 2018 when the Saints moved up, I thought, okay, that's for Lamar Jackson, and it was for Marcus Davenport. Same. Yeah, absolutely. So it's got to be one of those deals, right? I I think the most telling piece of all this is that they gave up, the Saints did, the first-round pick next year. While Philly's deferring their first-round pick to next year, the Saints swap out a first-round pick for next year for a first-round pick this year. So next year, where that draft class of quarterbacks, 2023, is supposed to be really, really good, Mm -hmm. while the Saints might not have a quarterback going into 2023, depending upon how the contract for Jameis Winston works out and how Jameis Winston works out. The Saints could be looking instead to swap basically and get to that quarterback, rookie quarterback and get to that nice, sweet rookie quarterback contract faster than, you know, waiting around for another year or a couple of years from the Philadelphia Eagles perspective. Does this feel like this is an opportunity for the Eagles to like see another year of Jalen hurts before they dive into the quarterback spot? I think that's exactly what it is. I think after, I think they tried for Russell Wilson and maybe even kicked the tires on Deshaun Watson. I think that had more to do with Wilson and Watson not seeing the Eagles as a fit with those no trade clauses. So once those two options were out the window, I don't think the Eagles love this 2022 quarterback class. 
I'm a bigger fan, I think, than most of the class. Don't think the Eagles were. I think they wanted that optionality of seeing Hurts for another year because while he didn't take the step in year two, he did take you know gradual improvements last year. I think the Saints themselves saw a much yeah, better sure. Hurts in 2021 than 2022, or I should say 2020. Uh, but at the same time, they know they're realistic about Hurts. They didn't take him in the second round of 2020 to be a starter. It was supposed to be Carson Wentz's long-term backup. So they want that optionality in what is seen as a better class in 2023. But Ross, I will warn Eagles fans, there's a lot of teams that have multiple first round picks next year. Mm -hmm. And you got to get lucky that a team at the top for, you know, everybody's thinking now CJ Stroud and Bryce Young, you know, it takes two to tango to do a deal. And if the teams at the top need quarterbacks, it doesn't matter what you're willing to give up. They're going to take those players. So if you're going to make this move with quarterback at the forefront, you got to be comfortable with at least three prospects next year to uh, be comfortable moving up. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And for the Eagles, getting this 2023 first-round selection from yeah. the Saints, they're obviously hoping that that's an earlier selection, which gives them a little bit more mobility. But for the Saints, you only make this move if you think you're going to be able to be a competitive team in a very weak NFC conference. But – the Eagles could potentially play spoiler to that in a way, right? 15 and 18 while the Saints pick at 16 and 19. Mm -hmm. What are the what what are the the positions that the Eagles might be targeting that Saints yeah. fans should be aware of knowing that at least as of right now, they're back to back with Philly twice. The Eagles always commit those high assets in the trenches, the offensive and defensive line, even if they don't really have immediate needs at those spots. I thought mm -hmm. when they had three first round picks, okay, maybe they'd be a little more open-minded to a safety or a linebacker, positions they don't normally invest those high picks in. But now that you have one fewer first, I think expect at least one defensive or offensive lineman. And then I think receiver and corner are the other two spots they really like to invest high picks in. They really prioritize everything that's about the passing game. Quarterback, you know, protecting the quarterback, going after the quarterback, and then who's throwing to him and who's stopping the receivers. So yeah. I think for Jalen Hurts, if you want to give him the best opportunity in 2022, getting him another receiver with one of those two picks is something to keep a close eye on. I'd say receiver, corner, and then the trenches. But I think for Eagles fans that want a linebacker or a safety really bad, probably have to wait for day two and day three. That makes a lot of sense. And I think you just, I don't know if you heard it, but all the Saints fans just breathe a sigh of relief <laughs> hearing that Philly was interested in offensive and defensive linemen because there is nothing that Saints fans want less than the Saints investing one of those picks in an offensive or defensive lineman. Saints fans would love for them to go back to back at wide receiver in this situation. But it's a good thing for New Orleans in that case because it keeps their probably top two priorities, quarterback and wide receiver, even if Philly takes a wide receiver before 19 right. when the Saints are back up on the clock. This draft class is deep enough to where three or four of those guys could come oh, off yeah. and they could still walk away with a, a Drake London or a Traylon Burks or any, you know, a Garrett Wilson or, or whatever, right? Any of those guys that don't go. So that's good news for them. I, I love your point though about bolstering the offense because that benefits not only Jalen Hurts in 2022, but potentially a quarterback in exactly. 2023 if they go that route. I think the Saints are thinking the exact same way. Use this pick to maybe gather their future plan, but also find a way to impact themselves immediately and that quarterback in the future. So, Ross, just last thing here on the quarterback going back for the Saints, because I am fascinated with this 2022 class. Maybe they are just moving up in this range, and they think the guy they like would be available. Maybe, you know, they know or everybody thinks Malik Willis is going top five, maybe even as early as two to the Detroit Lions. You mentioned Kenny Pickett. You know, you've got Desmond Ritter, Matt mm -hmm. Corral. Is there a name? Is it Pickett that people are really talking about if it's quarterback for the Saints? That's the name people are talking about? Yeah, Pickett's the one that most are speaking of. You look mm -hmm. at him, he, he checks all the boxes from the Bill Parcells quarterback commandments, which is a big part of what the New Orleans Saints do sure. in terms of scheme or scheming, excuse me, in terms of scouting their uh, quarterbacks. But look, if a guy like Malik Willis kind of like Lamar Jackson in that 2018 class, yeah. ends up taking this inexplicable fall. I don't expect the New Orleans Saints to pass on him. It'd be fitting. If they, you know, it, it would make a ton of sense, right? It would kind of be them righting their wrongs, yeah. kind of like they did with the recently retired Malcolm Jenkins, who I know we're both, of course, very big fans of in terms of his time with both of our franchises. So uh, I, I think that if, if Malik Willis were to fall, I think that's a place where they jump. But more than likely, Kenny Pickett is the top, is the, uh, the target. Today's episode of Lockdown Eagles is brought to you by rockauto.com. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership when you have Rock Auto? Their prices are reliably low for every customer. They're a family business. 
They've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years now. They have everything you could need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. And again, the prices are always reliably low. And that's very important right now, considering the price of gas. Cars are a big expense, I'm sure, in your life. So go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Head over to rockauto.com right now. See the parts available for your car or your truck, and make sure you write down Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. Welcome back into Locked On Eagles, everybody. Thanks to Ross Jackson, the host of the Locked On Saints, for joining us in today's edition of the show to get the Saints side the perspective of this blockbuster trade between New Orleans and Philadelphia. Guys, also, make sure your second listen each and every day is the Locked On NFL podcast. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories across the league every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. They'll get into their perspective of this trade tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your shows. So what I want to do wrapping up the podcast, and we'll get into the – we're going to dive deeper into the quarterback aspect of this trade for the Eagles tomorrow. I'm locked on QB1, but before we wrap up this Tuesday edition of the show, the question I want to pose to you is, does this trade change the Eagles' 2022 draft strategy? Like, based on what positions they might want to take, based on would they trade down again, would they want to trade up? Because this doesn't, yeah, you collected future assets and you gave up a first-round pick this year. Like, you don't have three anymore, you have two but you still have five picks in the first three rounds. You still have two first round picks next year, two seconds in 2024. Like if you wanted to make a trade up, you still have assets to do it. So I feel like this trade, I don't know. It's, it's a great trade because it doesn't stop you from doing anything. And it just creates more flexibility down the road. It's you can have your cake and eat it too. The ultimate having your cake and eating it too, because of Howie Roseman. So I feel like the trade changes your strategy a little bit but not by much. Because again, you could still trade up if you wanted. You could still trade down if you don't love the prospects that fall to the 15th overall pick and to the 18th overall pick. So everything's on the table. One thing though, I do think it changes. You know, when you had three firsts and a second, I feel like you were more open-minded to, you know, taking positions you normally don't take early in the draft, like linebacker. Although I didn't think they were going to take linebacker anyway. They don't normally that early in the draft. They've only done it once ever. And especially after signing Kazir White, probably was off the table. But now that you only have two first round picks, I just can't see this team using one of them on the linebacker position. And I think safety too is tough now. You're probably going to have to focus more on that 51st overall pick in the second round because, you know, I thought a trade down scenario was very likely. But I didn't think it was going to happen as it did today, where you were going to collect a future first and second. I thought it was more along the lines of you move down this year, you get a later first, you get a you know another second, and then you get a future pick. But the fact that they could get a second down the road, a first, and a third this year meant they weren't able to move down and still keep three first round picks or have two seconds. Because in that scenario, I'm like, okay, you move down you take like Jaquan Brisker at 32nd overall, if you could get back in with Detroit or you move down with Kansas City, or let's say you get one of their second round picks, you can take Jalen Petrie, Lewis Seen, if you have an earlier second. But because this trade down involves more future picks, a future first and a second and a third this year instead of a first or second this year, you know, taking safety now in the first round or early in the second is off the table. If you ask me, unless Kyle Hamilton falls and you try to make a small trade up. Um, I think now it has, it really comes down to what safeties are available with that pick. They already have in round two, you know, uh, Lewis scene, Brisker, Petrie, Daxton Hill from Michigan, uh, Kirby Joseph from Illinois. I feel like linebacker and safety, there's a, a smaller likelihood that those positions are going earlier. Whereas now, I mean, they were going to go trenches anyway, but with two picks, you can guarantee one of them is going to be a prospect on the offensive and defensive line. But receiver still in play, cornerback still in play. I don't want to take linebacker and safety completely off the board because you still do have five picks in the first three rounds that you can still justify it 100%. I'm still all in on taking a safety if I can get one early. That's worth a pick. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I think, I think it changes the strategy a little bit but not by much. And that's the awesome part is that this doesn't derail your plans for 2022. Howie Roseman knocked this trade out of the ballpark, just like I think he did last year with that trade 
uh, with the Miami Dolphins. And so it, it really does impact your future. It gives you a lot of optionality. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Now they have to capitalize with the picks they do have. We'll continue to get deeper into the quarterback side of this trade coming up on tomorrow's edition of the show. So don't go anywhere. Make sure you subscribe to Lockdown Eagles. Wherever you get the podcast, we're free and available Monday through Friday on all platforms, video form as well on YouTube. And we're always talking birds. Let me know what you thought about the trade at Lockdown Birds and at DiBiase, L-O-E. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again to Ross Jackson, the host of the Lockdown Saints podcast. Make sure you follow him on Twitter as well to get the Saints side of that trade. He's on Twitter at Ross Jackson Nola. As always, thank you for downloading, thank you for watching, and let's go, Birds.